Hi, I'm Cody Anderson, one of the pastors at Parker United Methodist Church. And today I come to you not from inside of the church building, but I come to you from our community. We've been talking about how the world is our parish. Well, the only way that we can actually believe that and live that out is by going out into the world. And so today I come to you from one of our libraries. Libraries are a wonderful space to be able to interact with people who maybe you don't always interact with, to be able to hear stories, and to be able to witness to your faith in new ways. We right now are talking about who we are as a people at Parker United Methodist Church. And Pastor Laura shared with us our new vision, a vision that includes us going out into the world. And so our vision is that we are a beacon of Christ-centered hope for our neighbors. What does that really look like? What does that really mean to be a beacon of hope? Well, Pastor Laura on Sunday shared that sometimes it's really hard to share hope when you don't feel very hopeful. We know that there is a lot going on in our world, a lot of bad news, and it sometimes feels really dark. So what does that mean for us, a people of light, a people who are to be a beacon of Christ-centered hope for our neighbors? Unfortunately, it's really hard to find hope right now, but I have really good news. Are you ready for it? We are people of good news. And the good news is that when it feels really dark, when everything feels really hard, it means we have work to do. It means that we have a purpose to live out in this world. You see, our neighbors, our communities, they need to know that there is hope, even in the midst of the darkness. They need to know that there is light. And so our job is that we get to go and we get to share good news. We get to go and we get to share hope for those who need it the most. There is this beautiful poem by John Rodell, and it says, whenever I feel helpless in this over overwhelming world, I become a helper. Oh, oh, my love, on the days when it feels like I have no power, I serve others. You see, whenever I wash the world's feet, my hands immediately stop shaking. When we go out into the world, when we share light, we can't help but be able to see the light of God around us. It, it helps us be able to look for the ways in which God is at work around us. So I've been thinking about what it is like to hear these stories of hope. Sometimes you might not be able to hear them, but one of the joys of being a pastor um, at our congregation is that we get to hear stories of hope, the stories and ways in which our faith community are sharing that light and hope of God in the world. So I wanna share with you four different examples of the ways in which this church recently has become a beacon of Christ-centered hope for our neighbors. The first one I know many of you have heard. Um, it is from a little girl that we met in Vacation Bible School named Sydney. Now Sydney, Sydney had a mission and she shared that with us um, at Vacation Bible School. She had a mission to be able to have lemonade stands and to be able to raise money to be able to buy these Mattel dolls that had a brace for scoliosis. You see, Sydney herself um, has scoliosis and she had experienced darkness around that. She felt like she was the only kid in the world who had scoliosis and kids were mean to her. They would tease her because of the brace that she had to wear, which made her feel even more alone and more isolated. So Sydney came to Vacation Bible School and she shared with us this journey. And then she shared with us the way in which she was sharing hope with others because she was raising money to help get these dolls into the hands of other girls, other boys who are experiencing this hard journey through scoliosis, who might also feel like they were alone. And so Sydney raised money for that. And we said, Sydney, we see you, we hear your story. We want to help support you. And so over a month, we raised money, especially during our spark worship service, our joyful noise, um, or our noisy offering that goes to missions. And we raised over $1,800 to help support Sydney in this mission. 
a couple weeks ago, we were able to share with her that check to be able to help her with that mission of sharing her light in the world and helping her be able to do that. And she was so grateful for our love and support. She was so grateful for the ways in which this faith community was able to wrap around her and to say, yes, you are sharing light in the world and we wanna be behind that. With our money, she was able to buy 350 dolls that will now be in the hands of others and be able to share that light. So, Sydney sharing her light encouraged us to share ours and look at the difference that that will make in kids' lives. Another way in which we were able to be that beacon of Christ-centered hope to our neighbors was when we collected all of those school supplies. You remember back in August, we were collecting school supplies for children in need within our community. And with your generous donations, we were able to pack over 70 backpacks. Then Noel, our director of children and family ministries, called around to all of the local schools to find out what needs they had for those backpacks. And then she delivered those backpacks to each of those schools. That went to help so many kids who were in need at the beginning of the school year. But the beacon of Christ-centered hope didn't just stop there. When Noel went to those local schools, she let them know that our church was there, willing to help out in any way that we could. So one of those local schools called Noel and said, we had a family who's in need. See, they had a family who had received one of those backpacks, but also was in need of a little bit of extra support. They had recently moved from Florida to Colorado. They didn't have a lot, and they were really worried about what the winter would look like for this family. They didn't have any winter clothing, winter coats, winter hats. And so Noel had extra money that was left over from donations that you gave. And she went and she bought them coats and hats and gloves for their entire family. And she delivered it back to that school. That family is going to receive those gifts. And to be able to feel like this community, this brand new space that they've moved to, sees them and knows them and cares about them. And I know that when they put on that warm jacket, they are gonna feel the hope of God, that somebody sees them and somebody cares about them. What another beautiful example. Our third example I have was the Little Blessings 25th party. If you weren't able to go, it was such a fun night. Being able to meet students who um, were 25 years ago students and now have their own students in our preschool. We were able to host this huge community event where kids were able to come and to run around, to um, ride a train, to be able to um, play in the obstacle course, to hear some special music, just to be able to have fun and community was built. Our Little Blessings Preschool and Kindergarten has been a beacon of Christ-centered hope for so many in our community. And we are seeing evidence of that, um, not only through that party, but we hear evidence about that every single day, where families who have been a part of Little Blessings Preschool and Kindergarten at some point along their journey remember us. They stop by the church. Some of them even become a part of our worship services. But it's in that space that they know that they were seen and that they were loved. And because of that love, it brings them back. It, it reminds them of the hope that is found, especially in those hardest of times. Finally, I wanna share with you a story, a story from one of our funeral services this last week. So I was able to participate in two of those funeral services. And it's another way in which we're able to share God's light and hope in the darkness. So this particular service um, had a lot of people who had been a part of the church in years past and were able to come back into the church. And they saw all of the beautiful things that we had done. And as they looked at our faith wall, they started to recollect the memories that they had, the ways in which God had shown up at, at Main Street, uh, um, at the schoolhouse, when our building was there. And as they came into this building, they were so grateful for the presence of God. In this hard moment, in this tear-filled moment, in this moment where there's grief, they felt God's light with them. 
And they were able to experience that through the people who stepped up to help provide the meal afterwards, tried to help um, make sure that everything was okay and provided that hospitality in the midst of those hard times. Those are just four quick examples that I've experienced in the last couple of months of this faith community being that beacon of um, Christ-centered hope for our neighbors. What are the ways in which you've experienced hope? What are the ways in which you have seen God's light shining in the darkness? There is this beautiful poem by Emily Dickens called Hope is the Thing with Feathers. It starts off and it says, hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Hope is the thing with feathers. Hope is a thing that lifts us up, that helps us be able to feel like we are able to survive in this world. And as we think about God, God, that light that came in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. God, who sent his only begotten son here on earth so that we might have eternal life. Jesus, who came into the world, not to condemn the world, but to save the world, who walked among us, who was um, an incarnate being here with us. And how that um, that moment, that incarnation, reminds us that we too are to be incarnate in the world. That we're not just supposed to be behind our church walls and share with each other hope, which is really important, but also that we are to go outside of the church world walls to be part of our faith community, the community around us, to be incarnate in the world and to share that hope with others. So how can you share hope with others? How can you share hope with others when light um, it seems really hard to find, where life seems really dark? I, a couple months ago, heard that when you feel like the whole world is dark around you, that means that your light is shining and somebody around you might need to see your light. So how can you shine your light in the world? How can you be that hope-centered spirit that shares the good news of God to others? I hope that you are able to think about that in the days to come. As we think about this mission, this vision, these values that we share, I am praying that you are able to think about the ways in which you can be a beacon of hope in the world and how our church also can be a beacon of Christ-centered hope to share with our neighbors and our friends. I'm gonna share with you a benediction today from Otis Moss III. May you hear the laughter of children and understand it as a song coming from the sacred. And may you feel the hugs of elders and experience them as encounters with angels. My friends, it is through children, it is through hugs of elders that we are able to experience the hope of God. May that hope that you experience flow out to others and may you be a beacon of Christ-centered hope to your neighbors.